Hey, how's it going, everybody? Brett and Briggs back at you guys again. Hey, 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 clean up the shower and make it look nice. Okay, we're good. You sure? I'm good. Okay, we'll make sure. Like I was saying, we are back at it with you guys again with another pellet stove part replacement video. And today we're going to be focused on replacing this auger motor on a Quadrifire Santa Fe pellet stove. And Dad, what other tidbits you got for the people today? Well, as always, to our viewers, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to focus on the Santa Fe by Quadrifire. And as Brick said, we're going to replace the auger motor. Let's take our time. Let's have some fun. And let's do it right. Let's do it. Sounds good. Friends, before you work on your pellet stove, unplug, unplug, unplug your stove prior to doing any maintenance on your pellet stove. If you feel uncomfortable doing the work, call your local service provider. Let's go. Okay, friends, please like, share, subscribe, help Briggs and I build this channel. It's a lot of work. We would really appreciate your help. Okay, let's get to it. These are the tools that you will need. You can use an impact, um, an extension, a Phillips that goes on to the impact, and over here, a regular Phillips screwdriver. You'll need a 7 16th socket that you could use on your impact or a regular ratchet like this. This is the auger motor that we will be replacing. Take your time, have some fun. If you're not having fun, and you're not taking your time, you may need this big old pipe wrench and call it quits. Okay, when you get your new auger motor, it will come like this. Right here is your Molex connector. When Brick starts to put it together, you'll see how it just snaps in and you're good. However, some of the older Santa Fe's did not have this Molex connector. So with the kit, you get this adapter that goes into here and these three wires connect to the three wires that you will see in the back. So that's what this is for. So if you see it in the box, you may need it, you may not. Let's go back to work. Okay, this Santa Fe has changed a little bit over the years. If you have an older Santa Fe, these doors here will just open up because there's a magnet right behind this door. So you can get right to the fans and the auger motor and everything else. This one's here is a little bit newer because of this chrome handle. And Briggs is going to show you how to remove this door or side panel because there's some bolts on the back. So let's go back to work. Okay, the first step, what you want to do is you want to remove all the pellets out of your hopper. So again, just open up the lid, get in here, and just take a dish or whatever you have and put it in a box. Don't waste the pellets because pellets are expensive now. I don't waste anything. So anyway, when you're done with that, you can have a little bit of pellets left. And what you do is just go over and just turn on your back and get in here. And then just go suck them all up as much as you can. Suck them all out of there. And you're done. Just a little more. And then you got most of them out. You won't get all of them out, but as soon as Briggs takes out the whole auger motor in the shaft, some of the pellets are going to drop out in the side. We'll get to that. Let's keep going. All right, so let's start taking apart your pellet stove. So we're going to go on the right side of the stove right here. We're going to be tackling this right side panel, and there's going to be two nuts right on the above one and right below. And we're going to use the seven. Where are those two nuts? Right here. And right here. My fault. Okay, not so. You got it now? Yeah, got it. Right, got her. So we're going to loosen those. I you like can use a regular ratchet too, folks. But for these purposes, just for speeding up, we're going to use the impact. So once we have those undone. I'm going to come over here. Hold on. I'm going to take those out. Kind of lift up a little bit. Kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Twist it. And okay. Once you have it, I'm going to place it right to the side. And we're going to go over here. And we're going to see, well, what's all inside. So right here, you're going to have a good look at a lot of your components. And we're going to be focusing on this right here. This right here is your auger motor. And you can see with the new one and the old one, this is the main area we're going to tackle first. So now that we've got access to this right side, come on in closer, Dad. Uh, we're going to start tackling, taking this off. First, we're going to find those wires right about here. And we're gently just going to pull them apart as so. We're going to set that to the side. 
the wires are now free from the auger motor. This part, so there's a few parts in taking this off, and we're going to focus on a top screw and a bottom screw and where those screws are. If you look closely, the top one is going to be right here. We want to focus on this one. Don't do this. We're going to go right here. That's Phillips your, screw. Your first Phillips screw. The bottom one is going to be right down here, kind of tucked away right about there. Can you see that? Yeah, right there. There's one on the bottom and one on the top. They're Phillips screws. Two. Exactly. So now that we have identified, we're going to take this out. I'm going to use an extension with the Phillips. You can use a long screwdriver if you want as well. But for these purposes, we like using this just because, well, it's more of our technique and what we're used to. So you can tackle any one which one you want first. Um, right here, I'm going to go for this bottom one. I'm going to make sure it's in. A little bit and as i'm screwing this i'm going to go very gently and as i'm doing this with my other hands it's supporting the screw and taking this out the reason why i'm doing that because if i just go right here try to take it out and if that screw falls because it loses the magnetic touch here it's not a fun time trying to find it especially when it drops to the place where you can't reach so that's the bottom one out i'm going to do the same thing for the top here we will get it started first Take my supporting hand, get that out gently, and we got it. I'm gonna set my tool down. I'm gonna gently bring out the screw, and we're good there. So now that we got the whole auger motor and the shaft and the bracket mounting all loose, what we're then gonna do is slowly remove the whole module. Now when doing this, I like to use two hands keep the wire out of the way we're going to grip it around the whole bracket here and we're going to slowly pull it out you might hear a little bit of pellets drop in the main pot area and that's okay because in that shaft you may have some leftover pellets and doing this slowly you can have a drop into the fire pot versus having a drop all inside here so just gingerly no rush just take your time and slowly take this out without having to bump anything else. And right here is your whole auger motor apparatus. From the motor, to the brackets, to the seal, to the whole shaft, well, corkscrew. And here you go, it's nicely out. Okay, first, once you have your whole deal outs, you want to find a nice, good working space with a lot of flat surface or just making sure you got enough room to work with. Right here, we're going to focus on these four screws that are holding the auger motor itself to the mounting bracket. So, enough room, we're going to slowly take off each one and we're going to put it to the side. And when you purchase a new auger motor, they usually come with a new set of screws. So just in case, if, you know, there's a mistakes made and you lose one, or maybe one got stripped out, um, you will have more likely spares to work with. So once we have all those set to the side, your auger motor itself is loose from the bracket. Now right here, this is gonna freely move like this. And when you're able to freely move like this, you're able to now see where the next steps are going to be is where we're going to be uh, loosening this Allen screw right here in the next steps. So once you locate where this Allen screw is, we're going to find the right Allen wrench to work with. Now, we forgot to mention that you need an Allen wrench for this. And the size being you want... I screwed up. I didn't even put that part on the parts list. It's okay. Come on, you got to help me, son. All right, keep it's, going. It's all about forgiving. Let's forget, do right? it. Let's <laughs> do it right. <laughs> so to tackle this Allen uh, screw, you can either do the manual way or find the right bit. And this is going to be a size four millimeter. And I also want to emphasize, if you haven't noticed already, there are two Allen screws right here. You're going to be focusing on this one. Not the one on this metal ring on this guy. If you loosen this, you're, you're actually going to be loosening, uh, loosening a screw that's not really going to loosen this auger motor. You're going to cause just kind of more of a more frustration. So leave this alone. And then no need to work with it. We're going to focus on this one. So with that in mind, I'm going to go over here. Find the right size. 
and see how I loosen that. Now I don't, you don't always have to take this out all the way. As you see, I loosen that, came out just nicely. Sometimes though, sometimes if these things get really worked in there, you might have to take this all the way out. And if you do, make sure you don't lose this. And it might need a little elbow grease to take this out. Thankfully, this old one was our friend. Slide it out just nicely. And well, right there, you have your old auger motor. Now, since we have it out, you can kind of see how these ends. It's not totally circular all around. There's a flat spot. And I can't the, see the flat spot. Can you see the right, flat spot now? Right, right. Right there. Can you set one down? Just show them that we're going to focus on the flat spot. Of course. And the next steps, this flat spot is important. So don't forget, because if you don't line these up right, you may have to do this whole process again. So we're going to save you some headache. All right. So this flat spot. Did you see this other auger motor? My gosh. If you look at it real close, look at all the grease. There's a seal here and it's starting to go and this grease starts coming out and then your auger sooner or later just goes south. So if you see your auger motor, if you start seeing grease out, just go ahead and order a spare and have it in your kitchen cabinet or somewhere so you have it and you're ready to go. Sorry, Briggs, we'll go back. Uh, you're all good, you're all good. So with this other step, again, focusing on this flat spot right here, you're gonna align that flat spot with this uh, screw right here. If you don't line that up and you tighten it here or down here, this auger may work for a time and or it may start being inconsistent. So if that thing's tightened down the wrong spot, this thing can start slipping, not having the right grip. You're going to have twisted metal in there. And then if you do have to go back in here and realign this, trying to take this out of here is going to be an extremely big headache. So just to save you guys some pain down the road, we're going to line that up right in here. Now, don't worry about all these screws in here. We'll take care of that in, in the later steps. But just always second, third, fourth, whatever times, how many times you need to guess it, or not guess it, but make sure it's there. Just make sure it's tightened. You can do a little pilot tightening just to line it up just right before really getting it down. And right there, see how I move it? It's in the right spot. So I'm gonna set that for the side. I'm gonna do the final tightening on there. As so. Now, when you're hand tightening it, you can hand tighten it to a good degree for once you feel like you can't do any more, you're solid. You can also use the torque wrenches if you want to. Now, the thing is, if you do the torque wrenches, you don't wanna to do too much. Because if you do actually start really grinding at it, you could strip these threads and then, well, it's kind of a permanent fix there. So again, be careful using these. These are super handy, but don't go too gung-ho on this. So right then and there, it is nice and tight and we'll follow up with the next steps. So when you're handling this, you may notice that this thing is gonna be moving all over the place like this. And it'd be kind of frustrating because you might think to yourself, well, I don't really wanna lose my spot. And in, in itself, that may be true, but no worries. Um, even if you move this around, like as so, you can put two and two together. Eventually, it's only gonna go one way because you have that Allen screw set just right. So once you have things aligned, we're gonna go one at a time. You see how I'm holding it with one hand? You can be able to grip down here so this doesn't spin much. And you can hold up here. And then we're gonna, one by one, start putting in the screws in. Now, I just like going a little bit in at a time, not all the way. And the main reason of that is sometimes this bracket itself uh, can move around a little bit. And also, since we're putting in a new auger motor, even though the prefab holes are essentially the same, well, when you try to put new parts on older brackets and stuff, you may realize not everything realigns just the same. So just with a little bit of patience, you have all your screws slightly pre-threaded, pre and then you can do kind of a more tightening. Now, they don't need to be extensionally um, tightened down but just a good grip as so and you're golden 
see as that it's not spinning much all you got is this going that's solid and we're gonna move on to the next steps all right now before we put in the whole auger motor you're gonna see some leftover pellets right here and just to save you some headache you just do a round two of vacuuming as so <laughs> Okay, so Briggs took out all those pellets out of there, out of the uh, auger shaft or the fuselage. And so if you don't take all those pellets out, once he starts to put back in that auger shaft, if, he does, if you have all those pellets in there, the shaft won't go in there. So please just vacuum out the rest like he did. And then the next step, he's going to install the whole auger assembly. All right, so let's put this back in. So right here, you're gonna see, you can see that, that the tube is completely clear, minus maybe one pellet, but that won't give you a headache here. We're gonna give us some ample light to work with, and we're gonna slowly put the whole auger shaft in. Now, Where are the two screw holes? Now I will get to that. All right, now, I'll back one out. Thing I'm back I'm sorry, son. <laughs> you're good, you're good. Now one thing I wanna emphasize is, is this seal right here. So sometimes this can spin around, and everything else well we want to make sure this lines up with this top screw hole now sometimes in older models you may have to line up the bottom one but in this case you don't have to it's just right above which is pretty handy so you only have to line up one we're going to come over here we're going to gently funnel this through and line it up as so I'm trying to get in and yeah. Can you see pretty good right there? Yeah, not bad. Just want to make sure the top and the bottom screws line up with those holes there. Exactly. Now, right here, I'm going to set that down for a second. Now, right here is going to be the part where you may need a little bit of patience. This is going to take some finagling. Real but, patience. Exactly. Patience. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. What, do we got a singing YouTube channel now? You bet. Let's oh, go. Gosh. It was great. All right, so right in here, I took off my long uh, bit extender right here. I'm going to use this almost like a long screwdriver. So the nice magnetic tip is pretty handy for this because there's very limited room to work with. And I'm going to gently bring it through, and then I'm going to pre-thread it as best as I can as so that's the top one that's the top one now just to make sure oh. since it's in we we'll give a little bit of there we go once that one's in we can focus on the bottom one right here now once you have one in um it kind of sets itself in place so we'll do the same technique right here right there I'm going to funnel this right through here and do a little bit of pre-threading. Now, the reason why I like doing that, make sure it gets tight. The reason why I like doing that is because if you try to get your hand in here, and you can see if you try to pre-thread it, you can th in theory do that too. But with the limit of rooms, uh, limited room to work with space in here, if you don't get it just right, and if you drop a screw, it's just more time. You're going to be searching for it. It's just more frustration. So there's many different techniques to do it. This is one way we like to do it. If something works better for you, hey, all to it. So once we actually have those two screws in, we're going to make sure they're tightened. Not over tight. Not over tighten. You don't want to strip these guys. If you're using a manual uh, screwdriver, just, just tighten until it's just real snug and that's enough. And then you want to go over here, making sure you got it flat on so that seal is flat in between from the bracket to the actual auger, shoot, uh, auger shaft tube. And now finally, before you close up everything, don't forget this one part. You want to plug in the wire harness. This is an easy one to overlook. There's a lot of people that may run into this, that if you install everything right, you close it all up and all of a sudden you try to run it, nothing's working. You could be ser searching all day, scratching your head, and you realize, well, you just forgot to plug it in. So don't forget this step. So once you have this plugged in, tuck it all nicely right there, and you have a newly installed auger motor. Okay, Briggs, it's just putting it on that side panel and putting the two nuts on the back with the 716th. 
and he's going to button it up. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Oh, I'll sing again. Try. Good golly, no. Didn't think you were recording there. Oh, yeah. Nice. There we go. She ready. All right. So here, your old Aqua motor's out. You got a brand one, new one in there. A brand one? When, uh, what? No. What? Not what enough, are you putting in there? Not enough coffee. Old motor out, new one in, stove working great. Dad, what else you got to nice, say? <laughs> nicely done. And hopefully y'all learned something today. And again, take your time. Have some fun with it. And like Rick said, patience. The next video we are going to be doing on the Santa Fe is removing the exhaust fan. And that's going to be a chore. Please like, share, subscribe. Help Riggs and I build this channel. We're having some fun. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.